Welcome to the official preview and predictions for week two of the 2023 NFL season. Your boy didn't do too hot in week one, posting a very sad 9-7 record. We're looking to bounce back this week. Hopefully things are a bit easier, and some of these quarterbacks that are usually good get their acts together. Let's take a look at the exciting action ahead of us. Starting with Thursday Night Football, where the Philadelphia Eagles take on the Minnesota Vikings. The last time these two played in the 2022 season, the Eagles absolutely demolished the Vikings for 60 minutes. Are we going to see more of the same? Well, on paper, the Vikings should have at least a bit of an easier time with the pass attack. The Eagles secondary is not quite as good as it was last year. There's more things to expose outside of Darius Slay, and you'd have to imagine that Justin Jefferson is not going to have the same kind of performance he did the last time. However, to counteract that, the Eagles should also be looking to play a bit better here in Week 2. The Vikings defense is nowhere near the level of the Patriots, plus they're not going to be playing in the heavy rain this go-around. Their run game should be a lot more potent. You should see a lot more involvement with that aspect of their game plan. Their pass rush is also still very deadly, so while the Vikings should be putting up more points this time against the Eagles, the Eagles are the more well-balanced team, and they have more people they can depend on, even if there is some mistakes. The Vikings just are boom or bust with their offense, and I think against the Eagles, who have title aspirations, that's not going to end well, so Eagles probably win this one by a couple of scores. Moving into Sunday afternoon, first up is the Green Bay Packers versus the Atlanta Falcons. Both teams coming off a pretty decent W in opening week, where the Falcons were able to shine with a good defensive showing, while the Packers went all out showing that their new QB, their new franchise guy, Jordan Love, is in fact ready to take on the NFL with a pretty decent scoring barrage against the Chicago Bears. And there's a real opportunity he'll get a bunch of more chances to put up points in the clutch, just because the Falcons offense has a lot to prove as well. They didn't look that great against the Carolina Panthers, and the Packers defense is also pretty solid. Although the thing is, I don't think the Packers will have it as easy as well. I think this might be more of a defensive showdown, as the Packers didn't have much resistance against them in a young Bears defense that's still building up, but the Falcons defense has some more veterans that's going to make their lives harder. Grady Jarrett is going to stuff out that run game a little bit, you'd have to imagine. I don't think Aaron Jones will be as dominant, and that secondary might actually be kind of underrated, and as Christian Watson's starting to get more incorporated, he may get off to a slow start, and I can actually see a world where the Falcons edge out a super close game. They're at home, and I think while they may not be the better team, they may actually have the advantage this early on in the season, so I'm going with the Falcons. Next, you've got the Raiders taking on the Bills. Surprisingly, the Raiders are the ones that walked out of opening week with a W, while the Bills left a lot to be desired. It was a pretty tragic performance by Josh Allen, but I highly doubt that's going to continue, especially against a Raiders defense that is noticeably worse than what the Jets are working with. The concerns are starting to build up on Josh Josh Allen, and more eyes are being drawn towards him as a potential issue, but against the Raiders, he shouldn't have that much of a problem. There's not really anyone that can stop him. The only person that can really stop him is himself at this point. He should have more time to throw. I don't think that anybody's going to be able to stop Stefan Diggs. They should be fine in this one. It'd be kind of sad if they lost, but you never know, I guess. Next, you've got the Ravens taking on the Bengals. Both sides are off to a pretty slow start, left a lot to be desired in week one. Joe Burrow arguably came off his worst game as a pro, while the Ravens for a while struggled to truly pull away from a Texans team that they had no business struggling against. I don't know, it seems like Lamar may not have all the weapons he needs still. Odell just didn't look that great. Zay Flowers is a good addition, but I don't know if it's going to be enough, especially with the recent running back injury as well. And the Bengals, while I think there is a chance they could start 0-2, pretty sure they did it last year, I suspect they're going to play better this week. I don't think Joe Burrow's going to sit there and take that. He just got paid so much money. Him and Jamar Chase have owned the Ravens in the past, and I believe that is going to continue. The Ravens still have so much to prove, and I know what the Bengals are capable of, so they're just the safer pick. How about the Lions versus the Seahawks? A potential offensive showdown in the making here. They both have exciting young wide receiver cores. Jared Goff versus Geno Smith. Two guys on a redemption arc, so to speak. 
Both teams kind of headed in different directions though last week. You have the Lions somehow taking down the defending Super Bowl champs. That's going to do a lot for somebody like Jared Goff. It's going to build up his confidence, and I suspect he'll play a lot better, especially because that Seahawks secondary had trouble against Matt Stafford and a bunch of receivers I've never even heard of before. So Amon Ross St. Brown will probably tear them apart. And on the other side of it, I don't know if the Seahawks are going to keep up. Their offense looked rather sluggish in the second half of that game against the Rams. And in a shootout against the Lions, if they even hesitate a little bit, they're going to fall behind and lose this one. The Lions at home, I think, are the way to go. Next, you've got the Chargers versus the Titans. I really don't have much to say here. The Titans looked pathetic against the New Orleans Saints last weekend. Ryan Tannehill looks awful, probably the worst I've ever seen him. And if he's going to be the starting quarterback for your team, you really don't stand much of a chance, even with Derrick Henry probably tearing up that Chargers defense. I don't think they'll be able to keep up as a whole, as their offense just doesn't have the pass game to move them down the field consistently. Justin Herbert is going to torch this Titans team and they're going to win easily. Next, we have the Bears taking on the Buccaneers. This one's interesting. Could you just draw it up to a fluke that the Buccaneers won last weekend because Kirk Cousins literally gave the game away? Or can they actually have a chance against a Bears team that left a bit to be desired against that Packers team? The Bucks defense is nothing to scoff at, and I don't know how the O-line's going to hold up. They might have trouble yet again this weekend, and I don't know how Justin Fields is able to adjust. The bright spot is that DJ Moore has a lot of experience going up against this Buccaneer secondary, but will that be enough? That is the question. Can the Bears defense force some kind of turnover on Baker Mayfield? That's going to be the deciding factor. And if I had to guess, the answer is going to be no. I don't really trust that defense yet. So I actually think the Buccaneers are going to start off their season 2 and 0 oh, just because they keep that offense of the Bears off the field and their struggles continue and their woes continue with an O-line that just can't keep up with a pretty solid defensive unit. Another intriguing matchup comes your way when the Chiefs take on the Jaguars. The Chiefs still not going to be 100% you'd have to imagine with Travis Kelsey still coming back from injury and then figuring out that wide receiver situation or in a prime position to have their worst start ever in the Patrick Mahomes era as the Jags are no joke. You know this is one they've had circled on the calendar for a long time. Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley are ready to explode onto the scene and I think they will continue to play super well and this will be a very competitive football game but with Chris Jones back and Travis Kelsey likely coming back and the Chiefs receivers probably just playing better I'd have to imagine they'll be the more clutch team you're gonna trust Patrick Mahomes nine times out of ten even if you don't know who he's throwing to so give me the Chiefs to come back I just don't believe that they'd go 0-2 to start next we have an AFC South rivalry game between the Colts and the Texans now technically speaking I did have the Texans a bit higher my power rankings coming into this year. I think their upside is slightly higher than what the Colts have. However, here in the present, if Anthony Richardson's health is not in question, I believe the Colts should be the favorites to win this game. It should be an intriguing matchup, these two rookie quarterbacks going head-to-head. -head. You'd have to imagine C.J. Stroud will play better against the Colts defense than he did against the Ravens. But on the other side of it, if healthy, Anthony Richardson should play even better against Houston than he did against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But the thing that separates these two is that the Colts team as a whole is a bit older and a bit more experienced. The Texans are very lacking in that regard, and I think because of it in an early season matchup without enough reps that the Texans will just fall behind. It's more likely that the Colts players on the defensive side of the ball are going to make those big stops with people like DeForest Buckner and Shaq Leonard there to make CJ Stroud's life just a bit harder. I don't think that Anthony Richardson, again, if he plays, will encounter that same kind of resistance, so Colts should be the ones to win. On to the 4 p.m. game, starting with the 49ers versus the Rams. The Rams surprisingly end up starting 1-0 here in the new season, as Matt Stafford came back to life and put up a bunch of points on the Seattle Seahawks in the second half of that game. Aaron Donald also looked super alive, which is a really good sign, but they'll be playing a 49ers team that is in a very different league compared to the Seahawks. These guys put on a clinic against the Pittsburgh Steelers on both 
sides of the ball. I don't know how Matt Stafford's going to do in that situation. You'd have to imagine that they're going to have a bit more trouble with a bunch of no-name wide receivers with no Cooper Cup getting by that 49ers defense. And offensively for the Niners, unless Aaron Donald is a real problem, they should continue to put up points. And because Aaron Donald is like the only real threat they have on that defense, they should work out a game plan to slow him down just enough. And the 49ers playmakers should do the rest and overwhelm a Rams team that still has a lot to answer. Next, you've got the Giants taking on the Cardinals. The Giants came off one of the worst opening game performances in NFL history, losing 40-0 to to the Dallas Cowboys and showing that they're probably going to have a much rougher season compared to last year. There's a lot of questions on how well they can actually do, but against the Cardinals, they're probably still going to be the favorites. The Cardinals might actually be the worst team in the NFL. They might even go winless while trying to tank for Caleb Williams. But at the same time, the Cardinals didn't do that bad against the Commanders. And knowing the Giants, they're somehow going to make this game closer than it needs to be. But just because it's Josh Dobbs and you just can't trust a guy like that, the Giants should be in the driver's seat for this one. Offensively, they'll do a lot better. The O-line probably won't struggle as much. Danny Dimes will have more time to throw to Darren Waller, and they won't have to abandon their run game so early on. I think as long as they limit the mistakes, which they should do against the Cardinals, they'll probably get the win. Moving on, you've got the Jets taking on the Red Hot Cowboys. Honestly, this might just be a cut and paste from week one of your Dallas. Maybe not 40 to nothing levels of easy, but they probably should have all of the cards in their hands as well here, as the Jets are in a similar situation to the Giants, where their offensive line looks pretty damn bad. I mean, against the Bills, they couldn't even do much, and this is without Von Miller, mind you. So the Cowboys defensive line, with how deep they are and the star power they possess, should be able to get a bunch of sacks on Zach Wilson. He's probably not going to have a good game unless he's really a changed man, but the only good news for the Jets in this is that they might have a chance if Dak actually still sucks. Your defense might be able to keep you in this game if Dak has another vintage performance like we saw last year, but there's no guarantees there, and I think overall the Cowboys will likely dominate the time of possession as the Jets just can't move the ball forward and they won't be able to pass the ball. So I'm going with the Cowboys. I think they'll dominate in a win. Ending the 4 p.m. games is the Broncos versus the Commanders. The Broncos feel like nothing has changed at all compared to last year. They go in, they play the Raiders, and again, they're not able to put up any points at all. Still a very boring team where their defense struggles to keep them in games, but they might have a chance in this one as the Commanders are basically in the exact same situation. They honestly had a very hard time pulling away from the Cardinals, who might be the worst team in the league. There were a couple of drives at the end of the game where the Cards had the chance to take the lead, but you know, it's Josh Dobbs. Against the Broncos, that may not fly though. I don't really know if the Commanders can be trusted to continue to put up a lot of points, especially because the Broncos D is pretty decent, and if given enough chances because he's a veteran quarterback, Russell Wilson should be able to maneuver his team downfield and clutch out a game-winning drive. He's done it a bunch of times in the past, so I think the Broncos are going to win this game. I say that with great reluctance, but I feel like at home, they're going to find a way to pull this out. Now for Sunday night football, where the Dolphins go on the road and take on their rivals, the New England Patriots. It's always interesting when these two guys play. It usually goes one of two ways, where the Dolphins end up shocking the Pats, or the Pats just have a really solid defensive day, and the Dolphins want to cry in a corner. What version of that we get, we'll have to see. It might be the latter of the two, as Miami actually don't play that well in New England. It's usually the other way around, where the Dolphins play a lot better at home against these guys. So I don't really know how this goes. There's a chance the Patriots might come in with a good defensive game plan at home and make the Dolphins struggle a lot more than they did against the Chargers. But the thing is, I don't know how sustainable that Patriots offense is. They did pretty all right against the Eagles, but I don't know if it can last. Mac Jones still has a lot of questions up in the air about him. And if they can't score points consistently and they're turning the ball over or punting, that defense is going to tire out against a very explosive Miami defense. 
Dolphins. So in the end, over time, the Dolphins will wail away at them and pull away in like a multi-score game. Finally, we move on to Monday night where we're gonna start having two games at once because why not? The first of which is the Saints versus the Panthers. Honestly, I see this being a mirror almost of how the Saints-Titans game went where the opposing quarterback has a hard time against a pretty underrated Saints defense. Bryce Young is a rookie QB. This could be a serious welcome to the NFL moment where he just has no answer for Cam Jordan and Marshawn Lattimore and whatnot. And the Saints, while I think they may struggle against the Panthers defense, are just going to have the advantage just because Derek Carr is way more experienced. He's going to be less prone to making mistakes. And I don't think the Saints are going to continue to play super badly on offense like they did against the Titans. As Derek Carr gets more comfortable, he's going to let it fly. Chris Olave is going to do well. They'll figure it out. I'm a believer in the Saints this year, so give me the Saints. Lastly, you have the Browns taking on the Steelers. This one's interesting. I find myself at a crossroads. It feels like a coin toss where you just don't know what you're going to get with either team. The Browns, again, I have to reiterate, didn't have to do much to beat the Bengals. Deshaun Watson still looks so shaky to me, and against a Steelers defense that is definitely better than the Bengals, he might struggle and turn that ball over. It's just a matter of if the Steelers offense can finally get it going. It felt like all the preseason hype died literally within minutes in that 40 49ers game, but I doubt that's going to stay that way. Even if Pickett still has a lot to prove in his career, he showed us last year he can be clutch. He's in another year with George Pickens. I think the run game should be better as well. The Browns defense isn't nearly as dominant as the 49ers. I think they're going to put points up and Deshaun Watson's going to struggle. I still don't believe in him at all. So let's go with the Steelers at home. I really have no evidence to suggest this. Again, I think it's a 50-50. It really depends on who plays worse. I don't really think it matters who plays better. It's just who avoids making more mistakes. And in this instance, I believe it's going to be the Steelers because again, the Browns weren't challenged last week. And I think when they do get one, it will be a wake up call. And those are my predictions and my little preview for week two of the 2023 NFL season. Let me know how you think the games are going to go down in the comments below and what you agree with me on and what you do differently. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more NFL content every single week.